Hey there folks, John here with Through My Lens, and today I'm coming to you with another camera-related video. Today we're going to be looking at this camera lens. This is the Voigtlander Nocton 50mm f1.0 for the Canon RF platform. Long name, fantastic lens, I really like it. I've done a very extensive, very technical review of this lens over on my website, throughmylens.org. I would strongly encourage you to go take a look at it. Uh, I do have some sample street photography that I did with the lens. I'll sprinkle some of that in with this uh, video as well. But really, I wanted to come on um, and really talk about why you would want this lens, why you would use this lens, because it's not going to be for everyone. Um, when I initially ordered this, got it in, uh, I kind of did some initial posts over in one of the Facebook Canon R5 groups. Uh, I have the uh, I have the lens mounted to my R5 right now. I'm recording the video with my R6, uh, but I initially indicated that I had gotten it, and I was curious. I hadn't seen a lot of videos on the lens. It was released in the fall of last year, October. Um, Voigtlander announced it in the spring of 2023. And again, I think they released it in uh, October uh, of that same year. And it really got on my radar because the Voigtlander name is really well known, really impressive. Um, they have done a lot in the uh, Leica world. I think they're probably most known, uh, well known there. They've, uh, they do make uh, lenses for a lot of different camera systems, but they are known uh, as a long-standing uh, very traditional, uh, very high quality camera lens manufacturer that really, again, is for someone who's more on the artistic side of things, uh, which interested me because I have a drawer full, probably 10 different lenses for the RF platform now that can deliver a very clinical, very digital uh, very detailed, perfect, perfect kind of image. But I was looking for something that was more film-like, something that was maybe even a little bit more, you know, Leica-like to give me that Leica look. And this lens again was announced full manual lens. Going to turn a lot of people off, I know. Uh, but again, this isn't a lens that if you're looking for your, you know, daily professional, got to get the the image every single time uh, and with spot on uh, focus, that's not this lens. This is the lens that the professional photographer is gonna reach for when they wanna shoot for themselves, when they wanna go out, enjoy the shooting experience, get back in touch with shooting in all manual. Uh, th this is gonna be the lens for that kind of experience. And what's really unique about this and what was interesting when it was announced is the lens is I believe the first lens that Canon has authorized or blessed from a third-party manufacturer. There's a lot of third-party lenses out there that are full manual, uh, but they lack what this lens has, which is electronic contacts that can talk to the camera body. Uh, and that does several things for you. One, you're going to get EXIF data. So you're going to be able to look you know, at the image files and know what your aperture settings, what your shutter settings were, um, all that, uh, all that da data, your ISO, um, which if, if a lens doesn't have those contacts and can't pass that information, you're not going to get any EXIF data, which is kind of a pain. More importantly, however, because it is a full uh, manual focus lens, you're going to be able to use the fantastic manual assist focusing tools that are that are in the Canon bodies. Um, I know in the R5 and the R6, and I think newer, uh, they have some focus peaking. You know, they have some really great tools that uh, the probably my favorite is you know what I call the three triangles. Uh, when uh, it'll it'll display you know in your viewfinder or on the screen these three triangles, and when you line them up, uh, you have perfect focus where the focus point is. And of course, you can set the focus point to be uh, adjustable with the joystick on the back, and 
uh, you, it just gives you so much control and you nail focus each and every time using these tools. It's so easy to use. I have a TT Artisan um, 50 millimeter F.95. Uh, you know, it's a cheap, you know, fun little lens. It's about 200 bucks. But again, it doesn't have these uh, these electronic contacts uh, on the lens to be able to communicate with the body. That's a that's a true full manual focus experience, and it can be darn near really really darn difficult to to nail focus, particularly at you know uh, f 0.95, where your depth of field is just razor thin. A lot of people are going to think because this is only an f1 lens that it is practically unusable at that focal length And I can tell you that's not the case particularly when you're using those manual assist focusing tools um, Some of the other video reviews have talked about the fact that this is not going to be the sharpest lens that you can buy And, and I would agree with that um, Again, they're going for a different look They're going for, you know something more like a film look something that's probably in many ways going to be more flattering uh, for portraits because it's not going to have that digital harshness. So some people will really you know, like that look and want to use it for portraits. Um, there is some, some vignetting, um, easily correctable uh, in, in uh, Lightroom, Photoshop, or you know, whatever photo editing tool you, you use. Uh, there are profiles in Lightroom for this camera, so no worries there. Uh, again, I've, I've been shooting this, uh, you know, uh, for a couple weeks now and have really just really enjoyed it. It's, it's really served the purpose that I wanted to give me a very different look from the other lenses that I have. Um, I've never really played much, you know, previously until last year with the 50 millimeter focus or focal length. And, uh, you know, I just really wanted to try to, you know, get into some street photography and really see what I could do with this lens. Um, it's not a cheap lens. Again, it's not going to be for everybody. It's retail price about $1,800. Um, fun fact, I actually picked this up pre-owned, uh, like new condition. Uh, I didn't get a box, but there was absolutely nothing wrong with this lens, not a scratch on it. Um, and I saved about 400 bucks. So uh, I think it's you know, a tremendous deal at that point. A lot of people are going to say, you know, well, why would you buy that over the RF 50 millimeter 1.2. Um, again, that lens is going to produce a very different look. If you're looking for that digitally perfect professional look each and every time, um, that's probably going to be your choice over this kind of a lens. Some people are going to say, well, why don't you go even, you know, for the budget conscious, the EF uh, 50 millimeter 1.2, uh, particularly if you have an adapter. And if you're just looking for the 50 millimeter focal length and you're, you're looking for, you know, a good uh, all-purpose lens at that 50 millimeter focal length, go for it. Um, that's not going to produce the same look or the same experience as shooting with this lens. The other thing that this lens has going for it is look at just how short and compact this lens is. I've got the metal uh, lens hood on, on it right now. Um, here's, a, here's what the uh, lens looks like without the lens hood. And you can see it's really compact. It's an all metal construction. It's, it's really super, super well made. Again, looks has, has a look more like a vintage lens, quite honestly, and it's really attractive. But it's got that all metal construction. Um, it, it's it, for its size. It's a little heavy, but it's 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 probably lighter than about any of the other Canon RF lenses that I have in my bag because those are some chunky you know, long, uh, the, the 85 millimeter in particular is really fat too. Those, those are some big lenses. And this, this one's going to be much more compact. It's going to be much, it's going to be lighter and it's, it's going to be easier to travel with, which, which is a big, big plus. That's going to be really attractive to a lot of people. Uh, because again, that RF 50 millimeter 1.2 is not a small or, or light lens. Um, this one, you know, in many respects is almost half the size. So that's a, that's a big plus. Uh, again, I do not have any concerns about the image quality with this lens. Uh, again, some sample photos coming up and I've just been super, super impressed. It's brought a lot more creativity to my photography. It's brought, um, you know, an, an altogether different shooting experience. 
you know, and, and it's really given me what I wanted in terms of being able to produce some photos that, you know, had, had a more film look to them, had maybe a more vintage look. I really like this when I want to shoot black and white. Um, just, a, just a really fantastic lens that really shouldn't be overlooked. Uh, I don't see a lot of discussion on this. I haven't seen a lot of reviews because, again, I think the fact that it's not autofocus turns a lot of people off. But being able to manually focus and go through that experience makes you a better photographer, in my opinion. Again, got all the specs, got a lot more details on this lens over on my website, throughmylens.org. Uh, please hit it up. Uh, you'll find some links to, to purchase the lens there as well. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Take care. God bless. We'll see you in the next video. Hope you've enjoyed this production from the Through My Lens YouTube channel. If you did, please click on the like button and do share the video on social media. If you'd like to see more content like it, please do subscribe to the channel, follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and do check out Through My Lens at www.throughmylens.org.